The Local View is brought to you by BioPure, changing the standard of clean. Hello everyone, I am Dana Angel and welcome to The Local View, where we highlight the Tri-Cities and the surrounding regions of the Appalachian Highlands. I invite you to join me and my friends, Josh Mancuso, Lacey Douthat, and Lily Williams as we show you around some of our favorite spots. Let's kick things off at Bays Mountain Park and Planetarium in Kingsport. Bays Mountain Park offers over 3,500 acres of national park, as well as 32 miles of trails for visitors to enjoy. And the Planetarium gives guests a glimpse into the galaxy with a state-of-the-art immersive theater. Hey everybody, Josh Mancuso here. I'm at beautiful Bays Mountain Park located in Kingsport, Tennessee. This park is filled with wildlife and all kinds of great nature opportunities for families of every size. Let's go check it out. I'm lakeside here with Rob Cole, the park manager here at Bays Mountain Park. We really want to hear more about what Bays Mountain has to offer for folks who want to get outside and get outdoors and get into nature a little bit. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you guys here with us. Uh, we're, of course, a 3,600-acre nature preserve, 40 miles worth of trails for hiking, mountain biking. Of course, we have the lake behind us. We enjoy barge rides on the lake, other recreational opportunities. We have a state-of-the-art planetarium located in our nature center. Can't miss mentioning the animal habitats. So you're going to see anything ranging from snakes, turtles, uh, red fox, white-tailed deer, and of course we're known uh, here locally especially for our gray wolves. We first began that effort with three wolves. We're now up to eight. Uh, the bee exhibit is a nice hands-on exhibit that we have just placed here at the park. And then hopefully folks come away with a much better understanding for bees and what we all can do to make a difference to help their populations thrive. All right, guys, I found Hannah. She is the communication specialist for Bays Mountain Park and the city of Kingsport. So, Hannah, one of the things I love about the park is how centrally located it is to Kingsport and other places. It's very accessible for people to get to. Yeah, so you might look around and think that we are in the middle of nowhere, but actually we are about a 20-minute drive from downtown Kingsport. So you can come to the park and spend your day here, go for a hike, catch a planetarium show, check out the wolves, and then you're in downtown for dinner at one of our local restaurants. It's really easy to spend a leisurely day here, but if you like to get your heart rate up a little bit, we have some more exciting opportunities for you. We have a zip line. It is called the Flying Squirrel. <laughs> it's a 310-foot zip line. You climb up the cargo net, get strapped in up there, and then you are flying through this forest that you see around you. Of course, we have a low ropes course and a high ropes course. So if you know, you're a little more nervous, you can stay on the low ropes course, but <laughs> you really want that spike of adrenaline up to our high ropes course. Yeah. If you wanted to get something a little more exciting, uh, check out the adventure course and the zip lines. Definitely gonna get your heart pumping. So Hannah, it's only five bucks for a whole car of people to get into the park, is that right? Yes. Yeah, we just charge per car and it's just five dollars. So coming up here is a really cost effective way to spend the day. We've got an individual membership if you know if you're just a single person and you want to come here and hike pretty often or we've got a family level where you can get your whole family into the park for just $50 a year. You will also get program tickets to nature programs and planetarium shows, and you'll also get discount rates on some of our specialty programs. 50 bucks for all that? Yeah, for a whole year. That's fantastic. You gotta get one today. Who's ready to meet some locals that focus on the furry friends of the Tri-Cities? Let's hit the trail with Tennessee Tales. Welcome to Tennessee Tales. My name is Gabe. Uh, I am the owner of Tennessee Tales and we opened uh, this boutique in May. Jonesboro is such a dog friendly uh, and animal friendly community. Um, it's a great place where you can, can bring your dog or your cat and spend time outside, which we believed uh, made it the perfect place for us to open this store. So a lot of the products that we have chosen for the store uh, are made in the USA using uh, really premium grade 
ingredients. Uh, we source a lot of our products locally. They're products you won't find in massive uh, retail stores. They are products that are designed specifically for local independent retailers. Open Farm is a great company that really focuses on the quality of their ingredients and they partner with farmers uh, that carry that same integrity um, back to their farms and really focus on the quality of nutrition and the quality of the ingredients that goes into the food. One of my favorite toys in this store is designed by the Mighty brand, um, and each one comes with a durability scale of one to 10, so you know when you're buying this product how durable it's expected to be when you take it back home to your pet. For the outdoor dogs, uh, we have a great selection of life vests that come uh, from rough wear. We have these, of course, uh, ranging in sizes from extra small to extra large. We have our Kin and Kind uh, line of grooming products. They make a really fantastic shampoo conditioner. This bottle uh, uses organic coconut oil and their products are very much filled with um, a variety of essential oils to accommodate any needs uh, that your pet may have. Right now his favorite is one of those great big bones that's bigger than him. The blueberry treats, oh my goodness. He knows exactly where Tennessee Tales shop is and it's just an awesome place to come. For every dollar that you spend in the store, you receive one point that accumulates as you spend more money. Through many of our brands uh, of food, we offer your 13th bag for free. I bought the Rough and Ready Wear. I bought a harness and a leash for him. I just absolutely love it. It's more comfortable on him than the one I had gotten online. This has been a great business for Jonesboro and Gabriel and his crew are just phenomenal. We need to support our local businesses. Uh, you can find us online at TennesseeTales.com or on Facebook or Instagram with the handle Tennessee Tales. Our community continues to be protected by the pros at BioPure who are changing the standard of clean. Let's take a look. We just wanted to create another model for rugged entrepreneurs that could tack in an industry it was highly needed in the marketplace. When we launched BioPure, being a part of RSS likes to empower entrepreneurs. Our mission at BioPure is to change the standard of clean. And anytime you embark on a, on a daunting task, like trying to change a standard the way something's always been done, a key component to that is education. The phrase is lifelong learning. If you're not innovating, you're not creating. If you're not creating, you're not doing. And if you're not doing, then what are you doing? So if you're a BioPure franchisee, you're going to get the best 24-7. You're going to get family support. You're going to get something online, offline, social network. What more could you ask for than someone who has your best interest at heart, their best interest at heart, and the sum of that is big R's for results as opposed for little R's for reasons. The world is changing, as we all know. And we've been ahead of that curve, and we'll continue to be ahead of that curve. Some of the older technologies, some of the older chemistries are not going to cut it moving forward. So making sure that we're looking at, at residual antimicrobials, making sure we're looking at the latest testing equipment that's available for us today to be able to monitor and certify what we're doing is actually working and what we're doing is providing the most premium environment possible for our customers. This past week, we announced a ribbon cutting, the opening of the headquarters. And we know when we've been in an unusual state of business environment and climate and a pandemic that there's a recovery that we have to go through. One recovery from the actual pandemic itself and recovery of the economy. So when you announce a new headquarters in a region in the Appalachian Highlands and the state is just beginning to open, then you have begun the first steps toward recovery. We've got programs that run from the industrial level where we're training people to have their own BioPure teams to then have a certified BioPure program to treat facilities as large as Clemson football or the University of South Carolina football or East Tennessee State Athletics. Our goal in it is not only to have them certified with our program services, 
but also let them market to their customers that they are protecting their customers and their employees with a service that's battling that germ fight every day. Being BioPure certified is a badge of honor. It's a badge of honor to let that business owner, not only to let the business owner and his staff know, but more importantly, to let that business owner's customers, the people that, that he relies on to support and feed his business, it's letting them know that that business is doing everything they can to provide the most premium environment possible. They're partnered with a company that has the latest technology, the latest equipment, the latest chemistry to make sure that that business owner is BioPure certified. If you see a BioPure badge in the window, it's gonna give you a sense of comfort, a sense of refreshment, a sense of safety. It is another good housekeeping seal, if you will, of this place is not just approved, but it's safe, it's germ-free, and you ought to go there. The BioPure team is obviously an incredible team, and it's because it's made up of a bunch of rugged entrepreneurs who are all committed to empowering rugged entrepreneurs and changing the standard of cleaning. Okay, y'all don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for what's next on The Local View. Now it's time for a treat that beats the heat. I'm headed to meet Josh at our food truck fave, Mimi's Creamery. Hey guys, we are at one of my favorite locations in the Tri-Cities, Mimi's Creamery. I'm with Alex, one of the owners. Alex, man, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Tell me, why did you decide to own Mimi's Creamery? Me and my wife looked into like investment properties and stuff and never found anything that we really enjoyed or thought that we would see ourselves doing. And we were on Facebook one day and saw the ice cream truck and thought that would be a fun business. And sure enough, it has been. Man, I tell you what, you guys have some of the best ice cream I've, I've ever had. <laughs> so the most popular that we have is a half cookie sandwich. So we take a cookie and split it into two. And then in the middle, we do three scoops of ice cream and then put some sort of syrup or topping or cereal, whatever you want on top. We've got about 15 or 20 different toppings depending on the day. That is awesome. <laughs> um, I could put Fruity Pebbles on my ice cream, <laughs> people. You own the truck with your wife, Jennifer, right? Yes. Okay, who's the better scooper of ice cream? I'd have to say me. She's the better salesman. I'm probably the better scooper. We, okay. we end up putting me in the back of the truck. She can be the face of the, face of the business. <laughs> good job. Yeah, you, right. you know what to do. That's good. It sounds like you have a great array. I mean, you have cereal, you have cookies, you have gummy bears, you have all sorts of things. Yes. So no matter what you could think up, you can make it here at Mimi's. Yes. So I'm a plain Jane. My go-to is just a chocolate chip cookie with chocolate ice cream, all the chocolate, and some Oreos on top. I don't really think that's plain Jane. I'd like to refer to that as a classic, so we'll call that the classic Jen. So can I try a classic Jen while I'm here? Absolutely. Awesome. Stay tuned for what's next. On our next stop, I get to tour downtown Jonesboro with Mayor Joe Grandy, the man who honors Tri-City tradition with an eye on the future. I've had the honor to uh, be in business here for 35 years. And it was just a fantastic place to come and establish a business and to raise a family. We had uh, a consistent, steady growth year over year, decade after decade. It's very easy to plan, very easy to plan growth in the business, expanding in, uh, in multiple lines over the years. Not only is it a great part of the country to live, but it's also really a good place to come and run a business. Entrepreneurs are exciting and they just bring a completely different dynamic. One of the things that, that we're seeing today is a much more regional concept than we ever have in the past. We don't have competing communities here. Uh, we have a region that's playing together and working together for the good of the entire area. And 
I love the outdoors. Uh, I grew up uh, racing sailboats on the Chesapeake Bay and I've had to shift gears a little to mountain biking and hiking and that sort of thing, but love to backpack, love to camp. This is just a fantastic area. The scenery is beautiful. I don't think we've ever had a conversation where we talked about where we were when people said, well, why would you come out here? It is so beautiful in those Appalachian Mountains. It's a great place to hike. We have fantastic streams for fishing and rafting, kayaking, water sports. We have beautiful lakes, so we have the most pristine lakes in the state. I think what you'll find here is an extremely friendly group of people. I think you'll find a beautiful part of the country, and you'll find a climate that, that you would enjoy no matter what the season. Kim Blaine of the Downtown Yoga Center has created a space in the heart of Johnson City where locals of any skill level can rejuvenate their mind, body, and soul. We offer a lot of different classes for everyone. We wanted it to be that way for all ages, all levels of experience, you know, what you had. There was a chair option in the class, just to show that really everybody can do yoga. We have gentle yoga, we have um, yin and restore, where you just kind of lay there and stretch, and it feels really good. We have some power classes so you can get that strength, and we have even a rope wall in there that might be something people don't know that much about. I saw that. That looked like <laughs> that looked a little advanced for me. What what does the rope wall entail? It's actually not. It's actually to just help hold you up when you need some extra support. You know, people who have mobility issues or injuries really like that class a lot because. They maybe can't, you know, bend back hardly at all, but if they have a, something to hold on to, it gives them an opportunity to still get the same benefits from the pose without getting that intensity that's not safe for their body. I love that you offer something for so many different levels of practice because in yoga it's really all about what is serving you the best and that's one thing I love that you kept reminding us of in classes. This is your practice, it's your energy, and this needs to be an experience tailored to your body. And you do a great job with that, with the adjustments that you make. That's something I really enjoy, and making sure we're doing it right and we're doing it safely. Hands-on adjustments I think we all love. Um, and there is a lot, there are a lot of reasons you do those to make sure that someone is being safe in the pose. Maybe to um, go to a different place in the pose, it's an access for something that might feel a little bit better or, um, you know, just to kind of make them feel good and let them know that you know they're there and you know, just give them a little like loving touch. I kind of was just surprised at how much room for growth there was in the area. It was time, the town was ready, um, and it's just been, you know, really good growth around here, not just at this particular space, but just seeing people start to talk about yoga around town, yeah. you know, it's really changed things. Now grab your friends for a sneak peek at a new local legend. Label has quickly risen to the top of the charts, being voted best burger, brunch, and bar, just to name a few. Uh, my name is Rafael Zabala on the label in downtown Johnson City. Not only do you have good food, but you know the atmosphere is, is something that's very important to me. So when you go into our restaurants, you see that the atmospheres are, are very unique and very comfortable, and it's a space that you know you want to hang out in and you want to dine in. And it creates an energy in the restaurants that you can feel as soon as you walk in the door. Our biggest seller people love is the Drunken Goat Burger, which is a really unique uh, Buffalo Trace blackberry jam and uh, goat cheese. You're watching The Local View. The Local View is all about welcoming visitors and neighbors alike to enjoy the Tri-Cities and all it has to offer. Our hosts, Lily Williams and Josh Mancuso, sit down to talk about the importance of being a neighbor to all, focusing on kindness and not color. 
Hey everybody, Josh Miyakuso here. You're watching The Local View. We're here at Spark Plaza, a great place for co-working and networking. I'm with my good friend, Lily Williams, also a co-host of The Local View. Lily, thanks for being here, man. Hey, thanks for having me on. Beautiful location and glad to be here. Hello, everybody. Let's go ahead and get into why we're here today. It's been a tumultuous couple weeks in our nation. And so we've, we've been through the, the, uh, the death of Ahmaud Arbery and, and George Floyd. And here we are a couple weeks removed from that we've seen have protests and all kinds of things. And so the world is really just in a unique place and it's been tough. And, and so today we just wanna talk about how can we really come behind the black community here in our region? I really think what we need is uh, communication and talk and dialogue uh, between us all, um, you know, regardless of, of color, um, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, gender, it's where we all need to have a conversation and talk and be able to have open dialogue like you know like what we're able to have right now absolutely one of the things that i think i've learned throughout all of this is how badly we need to listen yes. to each other well i think that one thing that would help with a lot of people is talk to your friends talk to your family who are you know people you call friends or family like i call you family mm -hmm. talk to your family talk to your friends directly speak with them and, and just ask them you know some questions of you know what can I do to help or what things you know can we discuss and talk about in helping the situation because unfortunately with social media as soon as somebody makes a post on social media you have people out there who are looking to turn something they Absolutely. will twist it yeah. every which way we see it daily and so if you go to people individually people you know and be part of the community in person, right here. Go to your friends and have real relationships with them. That's where the real mm -hmm. listening and discussions are going to happen. Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, and, and it takes it takes effort from both sides because even on the black community side, we have to understand. Yeah, there's some things where people are angered, they are mad, mm -hmm. but we have people who are trying to help us where. Those are our allies. We don't need to argue with our allies. We need to look to our allies and say, if you don't understand, let me help break this down to you. Let me help talk to you about this. A lot of people may not know, we have a lot of uh, black owned businesses in this area, downtown. Today I'm wearing uh, Craig's C Crown Cuts shirt, hashtag Love earn the crown. Love, it. Love Craig. Um, so what can we do to kind of come behind these, these African American owned businesses? So helping support the black owned businesses is, is a great thing by buying their products, telling people about them, but also help support the area businesses too so that they can put into the communities which will also help build the black owned businesses and grow them and expand them as well. Because the more we got business people going out to look at places, the more it's gonna open more doors for mm -hmm. even more businesses of various races to build into the communities. Because what we need right now is the unity. Absolutely. It, it's we all know that we're stronger together, yes. right? We're gonna be stronger, we're gonna have a more vibrant uh, and, a, and a more uh, peaceful and a, a great community mm -hmm. uh, if we are unified together and, and building each other up. Yeah. And that's what we need to see from, from the folks in this area, people of, of every race. We wanna build each other up and, and, and live together and work together and play together and pray together. Yes. Um, that's what we're here for. It is, it really is. That's, and you hit it right on the head, man. Just us all work together and build together and grow together like that. Yeah. We, we have so much opportunity for growth within each other. I just wanna also urge everybody to make sure that you go down to the local government offices and talk to them, talk to your city officials, talk to people about what we can do for change and to have them present ideas where we can make change to make things better. Also to have the police officers who, you know, please be a voice as well mm -hmm. and say some things on what you feel we can do to change because it's gonna take everybody, all of us to make that happen. Absolutely, and, and they'll listen. The yes. folks the folks at City Hall, they will listen. They wanna see change, they wanna see impact and growth and they wanna see unity. Yes. That's what we all want and need. So we're gonna do it, man. We're gonna do it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's good seeing you, buddy. Take care. A big thanks to Josh and Lily for educating us all on being supportive neighbors and visitors. After a fantastic day touring the Tri-Cities, I think we've worked up an appetite. How about a stop at Alley Cat for some seriously cheesy goodness? We are here at Alley Cat on West Walnut Street in downtown Johnson City. I'm so excited. I've got Alex here. 
They have brought Alley Cat back to the forefront of the community, the restaurant community here in the Tri-Cities. So Alex, tell us, what is the Alley Cat story? I started working at the original Alley Cat when I was 14 years old. My old soccer coach, Mark Patris, actually opened it up, and I was trained by the two original owners, Mark and David Hudson. And then, unfortunately, whenever that closed down, 2019, we came back and opened it up. It's been a ride. It's been nice. So what made you want to partner with JRH Brewing? When we first opened up, one of the employees from JRH actually came up to us, pretty much just asked us out of the blue, like, hey, we have space in our parking lot. Uh, we love what you guys are doing, and we think it could kind of be beneficial to both companies. And so we literally, a month later, we came and talked to the owners of JRH, worked out a deal, and came over here and the rest of history. You may be thirsty if you come down here and you come to JRH to get a beer, and you're like, you know what, I think I'm a little hungry. Exactly. And you're getting food, or you come here to eat food, and you're like, hey, I'm a little thirsty, so it's a great partnership. It is, it's been great, it's been good. Very thankful for, of course, JRH and John, the owner. I am Lacey, and I am here at Alley Cat with Miss Rachel. I ate here almost every day when I was in college. I don't know how I didn't weigh 500 pounds, because all I ate was sweet potato fries and drank a lot of sweet tea. So what's your favorite thing to eat here? My favorite thing, personally, are any of the Philly bowls. Like, okay. I try to pretend to be healthy. Yeah. So I try to like to not to eat um, the Philly, try to like get some carbs out of my diet. Yeah. But um, the Philly bowls are where it's at, because you can customize it with whatever you want. Okay. We have like whiz cheese, bacon, jalapenos, so whatever nice. you would like. We can customize it. Well, I love a Philly cheesesteak. I lived in Philadelphia for a couple of years. My family is all from up north, so I know all about a Philly cheesesteak, yes. so. This is the best Philly cheesesteak that you'll get, like, south of the Mason Dixon line, if you ask me. I'm so glad the Alley Cat is back here in Johnson City, because I missed it so much, and I'm super hungry. So okay. let's go get some food. Yes. Okay. The Local View is brought to you by BioPure, changing the standard of clean. I hope you enjoyed your time with us and I can't wait to highlight the Highlands with you again next time. I'm Jana Angel and it's been my pleasure to share the Local View with you.